Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. I just thought, since I recently cleaned my brushes, that I would kind of do a quick declutter of brushes, as well as make some recommendations on brushes that I think are really, really wonderful and kind of like what to avoid maybe. I have two brush drawers. The first is my face drawer and the second is sort of like my smaller detail brush. I definitely have developed some stronger opinions about brushes and I would love to go through it. It's a good mix, I think, of high-end drugstore options and some in between. So here are my face brushes and I'm going to kind of go back and forth between brushes I love and brushes I'm ready to declutter. Very quickly, I see this brush I've been using again. I love it. It is the e.l.f. Precision brush. It is just the largest, fluffiest, huge brush. And I love, look, I, I have it twice over because that's how much I love it. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be without it when I wash it, so I have a backup. This is a beautiful brush to apply all over powder. Bronzer is great with this. It creates a real beautiful diffused look. Any products for the body, it's it's just a wonderful brush. The it Cosmetics foundation brush, the one that's shaped like a heart, it's domed. It's, it's their brush that comes out, love is the foundation, once a year. Typically they come out with this domed heart shape and it's just such a wonderfully dense brush, great for applying liquid powder foundation it really doesn't matter it's it's just a beautiful beautiful brush and i'm happy to have it I would recommend in general brushes from it cosmetics you will see a lot of them here but i do recommend with the exception of this brush the brushes that are created for ulta are not typically as good as the ones created for their line so like this brush is one of their heavenly luxe brushes and this is gorgeous. This is their wand ball powder brush, the number eight. I love it. It washes so well. I've had it forever. It is so, so soft. It's great to apply powder. This brush though, I mean, it's nice. It's not the same type of density or quality. This is considered a foundation brush and it's just too flimsy. Actually work really well as a foundation brush I find. In fact, I think I'm going to declutter it because it's not, it's just not, it doesn't work for what it is, even though it's adorable. Another one I'm going to declutter is this e.l.f. Nabella Noir. It was a collaboration. This was a, this is a stipple brush that's actually quite large, but it's not soft. It's actually quite sharp. Some other uh, brushes that I see that I really adore. These are from Sephora. They're from their, um, they're the Pro Mini 55.5. These are great travel brushes. They're so soft. They can apply anything, foundation, blush, bronzer, anything. They're really workhorse. Uh, brushes and I love them. I love them to travel with. I love them to have on hand. I've talked about this brush so many times. It's from Eco Tools. It is a domed stipple brush. So you'll see there are some bristles that are longer than others. And it, it makes for a beautiful bronzer applicator. Um, it just sort of pinpoints everything perfectly. It's really soft, unlike this kind of sharp one. This one's very, very soft. You could apply liquid blush or cream blush really nicely with it too. I don't know that they sell this one anymore. I think I got this in a kit, but gosh, if you see this one, I would really, really recommend. Oh, this one I'm I'm not a fan of any longer and I'll just contrast it. So this is the original e.l.f. Stipple brush. It's fine. I just don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy the new Precision airbrush stipple. This is so much softer. I love the dome shape. This is not as soft. And this is one of these brushes that I adore so much. I want to get a second one. These are brushes that I don't know what to do with, though I will say they're very soft. I got a, a, a collection of Juvia's Place brushes, and these shapes in particular, I'm just not the biggest fan of. 
I just don't know what to do with them. They're this elongated teardrop shape. They're lovely, the quality is lovely. I love the weight of the brushes, the way they feel in the hand. I'm not, I'm not a fan of these shapes, so I am gonna declutter these. Juvia's Place brush that I adore is this one. This is the highlighter brush and it is love that it's a little bit compact so it's easy to pick up product it's not going to kind of fluff everywhere it picks up just enough product and again it's just so soft and it's sort of the perfect size for my face as i have a larger face i i need something that will cover uh, a good area a brush that was a real like champion in my in my arsenal but i just haven't been using because i prefer other brushes now this is the elf for regular blush brush I think it's really soft it's held up really well I just I don't have a place for it any longer this is a elf this is the flawless face brush this is another great brush for one and done it's a workhorse brush it can do anything it could apply foundation it can put on br uh, blush bronzer I mostly use it for bronzer but it's just a great brush to have and it's just ugh, such a good workhorse and it cleans so well and so easily this brush I'm a little conflicted on it's a beautiful brush the heavenly skin it cosmetics brush I just don't use brushes like this any longer I much prefer to apply CC creams and BB creams with my finger. It's just the warmth of my fingers and rubbing it in that I feel like does produces the nicest look for me. So I just don't think I have a place for this anymore. It is a great brush though, especially it's so soft, it's dense enough. But since I have the heart-shaped one, I feel like that's good enough for those type of brushes. Now this brush is special. This is similar to that, but smaller and double-sided. And I love the double-sidedness of this. This is actually from Stila. And this is the brush that I use to apply the Stila tinted balm that I adore. And I believe actually they were giving this brush for free when you purchase the tinted balm, which I think they should have done when they initially came out with the product. Cause I do feel like this is perfect for that product. And I love the pinpoint to the ability to kind of blend in any creasing or anything, especially for that very kind of weird um, waxy product of theirs. Um, another brush that I love that it's brand new to my collection is the 101. And so here, this is from BK Beauty. This brush is beautiful. It's so soft. I have to say it's very similar to this brush by e.l.f. Cosmetics. They are very similar in shape. I like applying powder foundations with this and I'm actually going to be keeping both because I feel like this is a shape I'm going to gravitate towards, especially in the summer months. These are my Wayne Goss face brushes. This is the 2, the 1, and the 11. I love the 2. I love the 11. I barely have any experience with this one. I'm gonna have to research this further and see what I'm supposed to do with it because I don't know that I'm, it's a bit of a stipple brush. It has an angle. I just haven't played with it too much. I washed it because I wash all my brushes before I use them, but I just haven't had occasion to use it. I love how thick and chubby it is. Like it feels so substantial. Um, same thing with all his brushes. They just feel super substantial. They're pretty easy to clean. They're just really silky and beautiful. I love them, but I want to play with this one more, but I'm definitely keeping all of them. Great blush, great highlighter, also blush, just beautiful all, all around. Another e.l.f. Uh, blush brush from that Retro Paradise. So soft, so kind of easy to clean to very easy, but I think one of my favorite blush brushes of all time is the French Boutique Blush Brush by It Cosmetics, the Heavenly Luxe, this one here. This is gorgeous. It picks up brush uh, blush so well, and it's, it's also just beautiful. I also love how long the handle is. Short handles drive me crazy. I love a longer handled brush. I like to have it sit in my hand this way, and this just allows for that leverage. These Bare Mineral uh, brushes, 
These are made to apply their powder foundation. One is the seamless buffing brush with antibacterial charcoal. I don't know about that. I don't know how antibacterial this is, but anyway, especially like after you wash it a few times, like how antibacterial is that gonna be? But anyway, the next is the beautiful finish brush, which has this indentation here, which is supposed to help um, hold the product. And then you have these outer bristles that help buff it. Look, I'm actually gonna declutter both of them because one of the reasons I don't use my Bare Minerals powders as much as I want to is because of these brushes. They're just very, very difficult to clean. They're very difficult to clean. And I have to say, I don't see a lot of difference between this indent and kind of like fluffing it around versus this one. I much prefer to use one of my other uh, brushes, so I'm decluttering both of them. This one is very nice. This is the Dual Finish Blush and Contour. It's nice that it's it has this like double-sided, so you can, you can definitely assign like a role for it and like remember what it is. I just don't really use it. And so as nice as it is, even in concept, I just, I did not use it the way I thought I was gonna use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. This brush, however, is a holy grail brush for me. This is the Bare Mineral Max Coverage Concealer Brush. I used to only wear Bare Minerals powders for years, like five, six, seven years, something like that. This was my number one brush for when I wanted to build up some powder and cover any kind of imperfection on my skin. I love this brush. I can't find any brush that does what this one does exactly the way it does it. I wore out my initial brush of this and I had to purchase a new one. And I just love it. I love it. I don't know. It's almost like a paintbrush. Um, if you've ever painted, it feels like a paintbrush, like a really substantial oil brush. And it just does wonders for covering and using that powder products to help cover any blemishes. So I love this brush, it's going nowhere, I'm keeping it. And then this Real Techniques brush, this is the setting brush. This is the workhorse, workhorse brush. In fact, I have a second one. You'll always know if I happen to have two brushes that are the same, that's a holy grail brush. This is a brush that's not going anywhere in my life and that I'm freaking out that it might be discontinued or something. This setting brush does so much more. You can assign it as a setting brush. It's a beautiful highlight brush. It's beautiful for pinpointing uh, powder application. If you don't like very powdery, like I don't really like applying face powder everywhere. So this, I could just go through this. Um, it's beautiful for a one and done uh, cream shadow. Um, if you have the space, the eyelid space for it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful brush. Even to start a contour with it, it's it's just small enough and powerful enough. I love it, I love it, I love it. So that is all my face brushes. Uh, let me put them back and we will get started with the smaller brushes. So this is my new uh, drawer that has all my face brushes. I have a few that aren't, aren't in there because they're in my kind of everyday uh, area that I'm currently using, but I'm really happy with that declutter. This is obviously my weakness. It's so easy to collect eye brushes and they don't take a lot of space. And I have to say like even these here, I'm not too upset with how many I have, but the truth is I just don't use all of them. So I do want to do some decluttering and I definitely want to give some recommendations. Should we even start? Actually, I'm going to pull out some brushes that are technically more face brushes or sort of specialty brushes. I think I pulled out all the ones. Number one, I, I need to talk about this one very quickly. This is the Rose Golden 146 Concealer Perfector by Zoeva. This is the best concealer brush for under eye concealer I have ever used in my life. This is one where I absolutely want to back up because I don't know what I'm going to do without it. 
This should have been in the other drawer, but I'm just gonna put it in my everyday because I love it that much. This one is from e.l.f. It's the Flawless Concealer Brush. This I don't like very much. It's too large, it's too splayed out. Um, I was curious about it, it was affordable, but I really didn't care for it. So that one I'm, I'm gonna get rid of. These are two of my favorite um, eyebrow pomade powder spoolie brushes. One is from Benefit, the other is from It Cosmetics, the Heavenly Lux line. Again, this is this one is actually better than the Benefit one for sure. Um, it's more comfortable to use. It's yeah, it's just a better brush, but I like having a backup. Um, and I yeah. The, these are like for sure I, I love them this brush on the other hand this is from eco tools this is just a you know a comb with the brush i don't really use this so it's just kind of collecting dust um this is the elf silicone glitter applicator so this is a great product this is all silicone and it just helps with appli applying any kind of not just glitter, but any sort of wet, chunky type of eyeshadow over already a primer. This one here is the Expert Concealer Brush from Real Techniques. I wish this brush is almost, almost perfect, but it just isn't. It does not work for me. I need this to be about a quarter inch longer because it's too short and it's too dense. And so it applies very heavily. Whereas here, there's just some more flexibility with the bristles so I can get a lighter application and blend. So this one is just not working for me the way I thought it was going to. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. Now, this is one of my favorite <laughs> brushes of all time. This is, I don't even know if they make this anymore. This is the MAC 210. It's tiny, it's a tiny, tiny brush. But I designate this to apply concealer on a blemish. And I was taught at MAC actually years ago to apply concealer in a crosshatch pattern. So kind of like a plaid pattern. And in doing it with this brush, you create the most seamless coverage for the most stubborn blemishes but you have to be use a tiny tiny brush and so that's why i have this brush i designated for that only and um i used to have to use it all the time because i had more breakouts than i do but now i don't use it that often but i still have it because it is like one of my favorite favorite brushes the bk brushes i just received these in the last few months i'm obsessed with them I'm obsessed with the face brush I tried. I just, I love them so much. They're so soft. They just are a pleasure to work with. I can't believe it took me so long to try these brushes. They're just amazing. They're amazing. So this is one of their sets. I believe I purchased this as a set. It has the 20, let me see. 201, 202, 205, 208, 206, 204, 207, and 203. So yeah, this is, I think, was a set. And I mean, there are just some brushes in here that are so special. This brush, the 208, is tiny angled brush that makes the most beautiful winged liners for people like me who cannot do it usually. 204, I love this really soft, blender or for like blurring out a liner. I love this pinpointed domed one that's really dense, the 207, and can pack a punch on the outer corner. This fluffy for application just everywhere. This angled to get just the more precise into the outer corner crease area, but still create a good blend. I mean, these are all just great, great, great brushes love them happy to have them in my life currently they're the ones that i am keeping out to do eye looks with so they're not going to get put in a drawer because i love them so much well, let's look at another collection of brushes that i really love as well and those are the alamar cosmetics brushes they had came out with two collections of brushes and i only have of the pink collection i only have one of the brushes 
this one here, which actually I think I am gonna declutter because I much prefer these other, these other ones here. The reason I have duplicates of it is I love to use this in my lip drawer as lip brushes. So I designate these as lip brushes. And these are just great, easy, soft, and just great quality. These by Juvia's Place, again, you know, I, I showed the face brushes that aren't kind of working out for me right now. And I gotta say, the eye brushes too aren't really doing it for me. These brushes are very soft, they're very nice, but they just don't pick up product the way that I think they should be picking up product. This is a very interesting shape though, this sort of larger um, liner shape. But yeah, they're just not serving me the way that I thought they were gonna serve me. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter those. These brushes here, these are from Retro Paradise and these are the eye brushes. Now, whereas I love the face brushes from this collection, the eye brushes are just okay. They're fine, but they're just not as special as they should be. And so I'm actually gonna declutter these as well. Now these e.l.f. brushes, I actually really enjoy. This is from their Mint collection. And I particularly like this one and this one as well. It's just an odd sort of rounded pinpoint shape. And this one's good to pack on color. I like having these brushes to work with more difficult cream products that are stubborn to get out because I, can see when they get stained and I can wash them really, really well and they're they're easy to wash. This one by ColourPop I don't use very often so I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. These I just received in my one and only BoxyCharm box. These are from Glamier and these are quite nice. I haven't played with them enough to form a, too much of an opinion on them but they're very soft and I really like how cute the handles are. They kind of match my It Cosmetics brush. Um, I like the, the fact that they included these shapes. They're just, they're very useful and these are very useful and these are sort of unusual to include in a set of four. Whereas you have this sort of smudgy brush, which I think is actually gonna be very useful and this liner brush. So I'm looking forward to using these more, but for right now, I'm gonna keep them in my collection before I form like a strong opinion. This 311 by MAC is also in the same vein as my concealer brush um, that I touched upon before. This is sort of a, my second, my backup, and, or if it's a larger kind of zipped situation. So I'm gonna just set that one aside because it's more of a face item. So here are my last e.l.f. brushes. This is, um, I always pick up the Precisely brushes because I think they're gonna be just great. Um, these are actually pretty good. This is sort of like a pointer brush and then this is a, more of a domed pack it on brush. They're, they're quite nice, so I'm actually going to keep those. Um, this one is great too. This is sort of um, perfect for if you have smaller eyes or hooded eyes. This is the e.l.f. pointed eye pencil brush and it just can get into the crease and help you blend and it's quite soft. It's not the softest in my in my collection, but it's soft enough it's not gonna hurt my eye. And as I, as I get older, it, it matters to me how the brush feels on my eye. This Morphe brush is another one that's actually very, very soft. It's my only Morphe brush. This is the M506 and also kind of serves that purpose that that e.l.f. brush did. And so the question is actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter the e.l.f. brush and I'm going to keep the Morphe brush because I feel like this is softer and it's very, very similar. It's a, it's a little bit less tapered, but it's still gonna serve a similar purpose. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter the e.l.f. one. I just recently received this in my Beautylish. It's a Sonia G crease two brush so so soft so pretty i'm very excited to have it i am going to use it happily along the same lines as those are all my wayne goss brushes eye brushes i love them these are all beautiful beautiful soft soft brushes i love them i love them uh okay so here are the refer refer brushes i have just three of them 
the three, the 14, and the five. So this is like a pencil. This is like a more of a pointed, and then this is more of like a fluffy crease. I have made it known, several videos I think I've mentioned this, I was not happy with my purchase. The way that they're promoted, it's extremely deceiving. Makes it seem as though you're gonna be getting like a Wing Goss or a Sonia G quality because they're all made in Japan, but you're really not. It The, the hairs are not as silky. No way, they're not, not anywhere near. The brush itself weighs nothing which makes it very difficult to use because you want you want the brush to be hand weighted a bit to give you some leverage to to use it and when it doesn't exist not only is it hard to use but it just also makes it appear so cheap i have to say i appreciate the the cut of the brushes you know the way that the the actual at least for these three um they're useful and I'm gonna keep them, but they're, wow, they were like the biggest disappointment and especially with the amount of praise that so many YouTubers give to Refer. I was just really looking forward to having them and I thought, wow, nice, more affordable option to kind of my love for the Wayne Goss brushes and it just wasn't, it's it's not it's not within the same ballpark. I mean, I'd say they're like Morphe brushes, you know? I I pick up the one Morphe brush that I have and it's it the feel of it is is nicer and the fact that it's longer is much makes it easier to use. These are actually quite short. And yeah, I I'm just very very disappointed in these and I won't be purchasing any more refer brushes for sure. I'd save my money. And instead I would <clears throat> invest in the more expensive brushes. I did try out a few brushes from uh, Nikia Joy Cosmetics and I tried the E07 flat shader brush and the E02 diffused blend brush. These are both quite nice. I love how long the handles are. This is exactly what I meant. I like how they're weighted. I like how the brushes are white. It just makes it cleaning easier. Um, I've enjoyed them. I've enjoyed them. They're quite, quite soft, quite nice. I would absolutely pick up more brushes from her line. And the last brushes I have are kind of unique shape brushes that I know I'm going to keep. This one is by Real Techniques. This is called the Instapop Crease Brush. And I love this because it has, I don't know if you can tell, but it's sort of like an angled how am I going to show you this? Here we go. It's kind of like an, uh, a slope and it it's densely packed and it's great for blending. Um, you turn it over and you can use it as a great liner. So I, I do like this a lot. This is by Sephora. This is their cat eyeliner. I think this is made for people who have more space on their eyelid than I do because this is actually quite long and it it's, has a nice kind of flims, flimsy quality, which it will pick up really nice, a potted liner. But I have very little space to work with when applying liner and this is just too wide for me. So I'm actually going to declutter this. So these are my brushes now. I'm very excited. I feel like it'll be very easy for me to be able to look and know what exists. Um, the other, all my, all my other brushes are here. These are all my um, BK Beauty brushes that I'm currently using. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Let me put that away and I will show you everything I'm decluttering. So here we go. This is my declutter pile. I'm really happy with this. I feel like I'll be able to appreciate and use my brushes more. Look, I have space for all of these. I just feel like if I have too much, then I won't use what it is I have and I love, and I won't wash my brushes as frequently as I should be washing them. I'll just kind of, once I once one's dirty, I'll move on to the next one, and it, it doesn't give me the incentive to clean my brushes, and I need to just get into the habit of doing that regularly, which, by the way, can I just plug this little drying thing? <laughs> 
I have this little drying thing that I got on Amazon and you just snap this top part in this little plastic holder, but it allows for you to be able to hang your brushes upside down and dry and it does such a good job. I, I can't recommend this enough. I'll try to link it below because I think it's just sort of genius and it's changed my life when it comes to drying brushes because some of my more expensive brushes like the Wayne Goss brushes um, and the BK Beauty, I just don't, I want them to dry properly with the water completely falling down out and when they're on their side that just doesn't happen as well. And so this is just a great little tool to have and what's great too is you're able to just take it apart and it stores completely flat like that and so it's like when it's cleaning time that's when you need to whip it out i just yeah i just love that product also the my favorite cleanser of for brushes of all time i'll insert a picture here it is the beauty blender pro it's like so silly and it even comes with a little pad to agitate your brushes and even though it's expensive for like the initial cost it lasts forever it is absolutely worth it because if you use a liquid cleanser i find like those go by so quickly and there's just none as effective as i find that one um so yes i really really recommend that i've been using the same tub for more than a year now and i'm only halfway through the soap bar i mean that's how that's how good it is so anywho i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was helpful i know there were a lot of like fluid recommendations so maybe um link down below i'm going to just outline some of my favorites and put links to them that's what i'll try to do so um yeah we'll talk soon okay take care everyone bye